finally, guys, back. It's been over a week since I've done a last, since I've done a video, and, and that weren't even a fishing one. That was, that was on that job I was on in that uh, lock. It's not completely finished, but me, me and Nathan finished doing ours. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of where we are. We are in Brighton with Mike from South East Sea Fishing. Um, we are driving along Brighton uh, into New Haven, and then we're going to go and fish Seaford. We're after early place. That's the plan for a, a very early place. It's only January, but the water is it's as flat as a witch's tit. It's lovely. It's like a summer's day, just it's only it's minus one. It's absolutely freezing, but it's not a breath of wind, and it's it's lovely and sunny. Um, it's, we've just found a little weather window where we've managed to get out. We are very late because um, Mike couldn't go till a bit later on. The tides aren't the best tides because our low water we're fishing low water is about up past two in the day, and with it being January, it's going to be dark by five. So. Yeah, it's not ideal, but we are going to try and get an early. I've never had a place in January myself, so I'm going to try today. We've just been down to Brighton Marina, picked up our bait. We've got some fresh blacks, the only fresh blacks he reckons in Sussex. Um, and we've got some fresh outs, but I don't quite know. I asked for four score of blacks, but it seems I've got two score of blacks and maybe two score of commons or yellowtails. I don't actually know. Um, so, yeah, we'll see when we get there. But what a beautiful day to be fishing. I'm buzzing. Might as a speed camera slow down. Um, yeah, I can't wait. I think Dan's there waiting for us on the beach. It's, look at it. You must be able to see that water. It is absolutely beautiful out there. What? Right. Right, the reason I started the video in the car, talking absolute crap now, is because when we get there, we are we are limited for time. We, like I say, we've got about two hours before it gets dark, and I want to catch a place. I haven't come all this way not to get one. Just paid eight pound a score for black lug, which makes me want to throw up in my mouth because that's disgusting. Eight pound a score. What is that all about? Um, but it is what it is. It's the only place. The tides are small. I couldn't. I couldn't get out and pump it myself because I still haven't got a car. Although today I've, ju I've just bought one today, and it should be ready to go and pick up on Friday. So, um, yeah. Right. I'm going to stop now. I'm going to keep giving Mike directions of where we're going because he hasn't got a clue. And uh, I'll see you on the beach when my rods are out in a bit. Well, here we are, guys. What a day. Set up two rods. Uh, new rod, and we'll talk about um, Grey's Apollo. I was off it the other day with the little uh, white speed mag, so yeah, I took it. Um, you know how it is. Um, and I've still got the Daiwa ABW for now. Borrowed an Ace 525 for this trip, just, just in case it's something a bit bigger for tonight. So I've got that. That's that. What a day. What a day down on Seaford. We're in front of the uh, Yacht Club ish. Uh, I don't know where the Yacht Club is actually. I think it's there. Oh, yeah, there's yachts there. That's probably the Yacht Club. Um, Dan's down here already, obviously. Mike's down here. He's up, just sticking his second one out. What a day. There's, there's not a breath of wind at all. Um, it's, there's a bit of warmth in the sun as well. Let's have a little look at Westy casting quick. Try and get him the bloody area up. I'm going to show you Dan's bait. Dan dug his bait. I'll show you my bait actually first. Because I'm a bit annoyed about that to be fair. Lovely. 30 yards, nice. <laughs> right guys we all know I dig bait and I pump blacks so I can't I'm not gonna complain about the size of worm because um because it's the small tides and I know I know all about that it is what it is I'm fishing for flatfish anyway so there I'm happy with that yeah they're small but they're for flatfish I'm happy with that I ordered black lug rolled black lug when I got to the tackle shop I've been given these small yellows now they still will squeeze out and they'll still wrap up but the reason I've been given these small yellows is because when when these are blown because they are small when they're blown there'll be nothing of them absolutely nothing of them so he's done me over I think to be honest I didn't really even think about it when he said oh yeah I've got some there and I've got some blacks that haven't been because they've, they've been freshly pumped and we didn't have time to wrap them for you well the time you squeeze that out there'll be nothing left of it now all right they'll probably be all right for today so they're not too bad but I just think I've been done over a little bit eight pound yeah, it is what it is. Let's not win. Let's go and see what Dan's got. Because Dan dug his bait, which is what I would have done if I'd have had a motor. But I'll get, get it Friday and no, I'll all be good. Dan, what you got, mate? Oh, Dan's got bling on his rigs. Dan's got lovely ragworm that I'm pinching in a minute. Fresh dug. And he's got loads of nice, big, fat, juicy common lugworm. Fresh dug. That have been in his van for about a week. <laughs> so they're not fresh, they're just dug. 
let's have a look at these rag oh look at that look lovely lovely right we're um dan's being greedy and using 15 rods with 16 hooks on each rig <laughs> um but yeah what a day I hope you're all enjoying your days at work, Tuesday afternoon, and uh, here I am, in a bit. Well, first card, first card. I am buzzing. Lovely place, what's it go? Um, it's taking that sun down, that's it. 36 centimetres, so it's not big for down here. It's, it's a nice fish, it's sizable, well in size, I'm sure it is to take home. Not that I'm going <coughs> it's all gonna go back, but first chuck, early place fishing on a day like today while everyone else is at work. January. Love it. Poor old Nave sitting in some classroom doing his confined space course and I'm a thief <laughs> catching place in January. Love it. Sorry Nave. But yeah, I am I'm buzzing. That was on them little yellow tails, just straight little yellow tails. Um and well, I, I can't you can't see them because they're so far down his throat. But where's my other rig? Why'd you put that? Sorry mate. That's it. Just literally set this other rig up. This is the two loop rig, this is what I've caught that on. Where's these green and black beads? Oh, there's that pink one on there, but that's not on the bottom one. I've got three on that one. Just so, uh, so they look the same as the uh, yeah, pea muscles. muscles. That's, that's it, it. pea muscles. Um, out on the seabed. But yeah, and that's what they turn out like. That's why they're not rolled. Them yellows that are all fat, that's what happens. When you put them on hook, they go like that. So that's why he hasn't rolled them, because they're just ridiculous. Um, but it is what it is. They've just caught a fish, so I can't really complain. His bait's amazing. Um, right. I'll bring you back when I get one that's 56. Good. Yeah? Right guys, I want to show you a new rig. But I don't, I'm not going to say I've invented, but I've never seen one before. I'm sitting indoors the other night, buggering around, thinking, on, thinking of a way of clipping down a one hook rig for place fishing. Because it's early in the year, I thought we might want that little bit of extra distance. To be honest, it hasn't, it hasn't really mattered. That one I just had wasn't that far out. Um, but I thought one hook, you're going to get one up further than you're going to get two up. Um, so I, I thought to myself, I want to make a, dis a, a distance rig that I can clip down, and when it all comes unclipped, it's nice and long like a flying trace, because I love a flying trace. Um, it's probably my favourite way of fishing. But casting off the beach is our work. So, this is what I came up with. That dog's going straight from my boat. Uh, he's alright. Right. Right. Oh, that's totally. That's his eye. Right, sorry, guys. So, this is what I came up with. <laughs> look, look, look how long it is. Look, very long, but it doesn't fish that long. That's the thing. So, <coughs> I'll clip the lead on it. Any lead will work, and, and any um, any bait clip, but imp's the best, so I don't know why you want to use anything else. <laughs> <laughs> In my personal opinion. Right, the length of your rig is that. That is the length of the rig. Oh, hang on, let me go back a bit. See that? What's that? Two foot? Go on, yeah, that's Just it. Just over two foot. Right, so. The Gemini pulley. Is, that's what it's called, isn't it? It's a yeah. Gemini pulley. Premium pulley bead. Premium pulley bead is attached to the top. That goes to your main line. That'll go to your main line. Now this can be a swivel or a, or a clip, whatever. This then will be your hook length. So this is 70 pound leader that I've made the rig with because this is what you're casting against. You're casting against 70 pound leader, so it's the same as what should be on your reels, whatever. But then to the end of the hook length, it's just an up, uh, an upturned, bent Gemini clip, whatever you want to call it. And then you make up short hook lengths like this. So this is just a piece of 20 pound amnesia, a little swivel, size one Camazan B940 hook. Um, so I'm using for the play. I use size ones because the place down here on the south coast can grow decent size, so you don't want to find wire hook. Now for place, green and black beads was always the winner. But now Seaglow of Mike has come up with green and black beads together. They're not perfectly made, they're not perfectly 50-50 green and black, but then these are trying to replicate the, the P muscles, isn't it? They're called P yeah, muscles. P muscles. They're yeah. trying to replicate the P muscles on the seabed. They're not going to be perfect 50 50 either. So for me, they're ideal. And the thing is, look, you can just put it on your hook, slide it up and over, it acts as a bait stop and the bead. Um, any way you want, I'm just sticking them on because I'm trying to do it without boring you all to death. I'll just drop that one. And then you've got the shine of the green and black. There you go. And you can set them at any distance you want, so like that. And then you've got your bait. Um, yeah, so that's that. 
they look the absolute nuts. And then that little bit there clips onto that. That's your hook length. Now this is always, I'm always going to use, when I make this rig, I'm always going to use 70 pound. From that swivel, I'm always going to use that 70 pound because that can be used now. Forget about all this. This is the bit that the place want. That's the bit that's going to be moving around in the tide, that little bit from that swivel. The swivel's there to stop it from spinning and tangling. Also, I can take that off, and if I want to use a bit of line that big with 40 pound line and a size pair of 8.0s for a ray, or for a conga, or for a cod, or whatever, I can take that off. So when I'm pre-baiting rigs, I need one rig body. From now on, this is the only rig I'm probably going to use, unless I'm fishing with two hooks like I am on that. That rig is now going to fish every fish I want it for. This is for small fish like place, and if I take that off and put 40 pound line on it with a pen or like I just said, it's for big fish. Let me show you how it clips up. I don't think I'm going to be able to because I ain't got it clipped to a rig. Right, yeah, I will. You want me to hold it? No, 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 it's alright, I've got it, I think. So that, that, don't forget that, that Gemini there is going to, the, to your main line on your, on your rod. Now we're going to bring, take the hook out your jammer, bring the clip up, clip it in there, just like that. Don't forget that is still attached. Now you bring that down. If I can do it without it falling into pieces, I can't do it without it falling into pieces because it's not clipped up to a rod. Basically, your length goes on there. Give me a swivel. Yeah, take that, Mike. You got it. Yeah, I got it. Trying to do it with one hand is hard work. That clips onto there. Well, that's it. You got that? Yeah. Me I'll take that back off you now. So now you've got, when that comes to it, you've got like a one hook pulley loop rig. Yeah, it all compacts down, doesn't it? So it all compacts down to that big. Forget about the big long loop of line. Now that piece of extra line tied on the bottom of that swivel can be 20 foot long. So you can fish a rig miles and miles and miles if you want, because it's all in the loop. It's all compacted down. You've got now, a, a lot of, What? you got a bite on your big rod. Of course I have. Oh, I've got a bite. <laughs> a lot of people go, oh yeah, but they get tangled up. Watch it here. Watch it here. That's going to come off there. That's going to come off there. there the lead's Perfect. gone down. And that is going in there. This is obviously attached to your rod. Look how long that hook is. Massive, massive long fly and trace. Now remember, this piece of line here that's connected to your hook and connected to the bottom of that rig can be as long as you want or as short as you want because that's the loop. That's the best thing about it. Um, if anyone knows what that rig's called, please tell me. I don't and think don't, it is called anything. And don't blag it because I'm telling you now, I reckon this is my rig. And I, if it is, it's the fish on the rig. <laughs> just, just, put, just putting it out there. Just, <laughs> anyway, I've got a place to catch and you'll probably bored of me in a bit. Just a quick one guys, I thought I'd bring it back for the sunset because it's amazing. Look at that. Where else would anyone rather be on a day like a day? I'm still in my jumper. I say jumper, I've got two jumpers on. I was just watching a bit of video back of me holding the place when Mike was recording it. God, he makes me look fat. Um, yeah, it's, it's lovely. I, I don't care if I don't catch any more fish. I'll bring it back in a bit. Watch your line though. Uh, let me come down this way because then I'm out of the sun. Reese is just about to go and cast. Fish on the rig. Please blow up. Come on, look at that. So look how nice that is out there. Number two. That has just come to the fish hunt the rig as we're going to call it now. Nice, look how long that is look, from that lead. That's how long, that's probably six foot long. Nice flying trace. Mike's green and black beads. Literally. It came up the beach and I said to Dan, I said, if this is a place, because Mike's just had a little white, and I said, if this is a place, it's a good fish. And oh, well, I'm happy with that. I don't know what it goes, what it measure wise. Um, well, it's bigger than the box, so it's, that goes up to 38, so you've got about 39, 41, 42 centimetres. In fact, I'll probably weigh it. Dan, you're having this, Dan, aren't you? You're going to eat this one, aren't you? Yeah, mate. Right, let's quickly weigh it then. Let's quickly weigh the old girl. Just, just so we know where they're going. Zero that off. That is a lovely fish. For the first session of the year, place fishing, I'll take that all day long. 
one pound six that's going one pound six so yeah i'll um if you can see that i'll take that all day okay i will take that all day long well we're gonna get some pictures then and i'll get that back rod back out and get some more in a bit well i brought you back sun went down ages ago but look look at the colors look at that what a lovely evening mike's reeling in he's just he's been getting lo loads of nice bites a few little taps but mike that's gone light isn't it yeah. you are joking me no no nah, it's gone light oh, i don't know that looked like it come back then mike's reeling in his rod but um what a lovely lovely evening no nah, that's gone light Ain't nothing has it gone completely gone yeah such a tit <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Oh. Right, well, forget Mike because he's useless. Um, let's zoom you in. Oh wow. Um, Dan's not doing too well either at the minute. Um, yeah, it's all gone a bit quiet, really. Um, I was going to say, I can't remember. Couldn't have been that important. Hey. Oh no. Well, whatever it was, it's just kicked back into gear. And Westy has got himself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well done, mate. Finally. <laughs> Dan is not going to be happy. Oh, I'm chuffed. Oh, that's, that's a nice place and all. Oh, it's not as big as mine, but you know. I'm chuffed. <laughs> well done, mate. Cracker. Right, it's even took my beads right down his mouth. So look. You see him? Right down there. Green and blacks. Spot on. Yes, mate. Perfect. Wicked. Yeah. Oh, Hey, I'll stand there a minute, Mike. Let's get a picture. It's not a very good picture, but yeah, yeah, it's close enough. <laughs> Happy days. Right, I'll bring you back in a minute, guys. Right, guys, brought you back. Right, now we're on the second aspect of the fish hunter rig, as I'm going to call it. So this is the length I've been using on that massive, great big long rig for the place. I snowed that little red snowed of, I don't know, a foot, 12 inches. With the uh, with the green and black beads on from Sea Glow, that's that are outstanding. Um, I love them, absolutely love them, because they're not perfect. If that makes sense, they look like they they could be on the seabed. They're not spot on. Um, with these terrible lug that are all blowing. Um, so yeah, that will now get wrapped up just like these little ones that are already pre-made in this bag. I'll wrap that up and put that in there. And now we've got another trace, about a foot long, with 40 pound line, still the same swivel at the top, but we've got two. Eight o's in it. Um, let's try and get it to focus. Two eight o's in it, and now we've got a big lump of uh, mackerel and squid. A whole squid, um, and well, that much of a mackerel. And the squid we're using is this Sam's C5. I've heard a lot about this squid. I've heard it's meant to be really, really good. It's like the best squid you can buy for fishing. I don't know why squid squid to me, but apparently it's the way it's not washed is the key. So now this little bit of thing will clip onto that rig out there at the minute. It's still fishing away with a with another small hook on it, another another red snood with a size one with a few green and black beads. But as soon as it comes in, as you can see now, it's dark. There's still a little red tinge in the sky, which is such a beautiful night. Um, yeah, as soon as that one comes in, that'll be it for that. And I'll be fishing still with the um, the two up loop rig on the other rod, still scratching about. But if there's too many white in, then I'll just change both. I'll just put fish hunting rigs on both, and uh, and just have two big baits out and see what's about. I don't. I mean, I, I did. I did ask um, the other day what what was caught down here after night after night because I've never fished this beach before in my life. So I, I asked what was caught down here at night. Obviously, this time of year. What you got? Dan's got him. Dan's got a white in. Um, yeah, and apparently there's a chance of ungulates. Apparently there's a chance of congas. Who knows? As long as it's not white and a dogfish, I don't care. But yeah, even even if I blank now for the rest of the night, them two places I've had that were in this time of year, I am over the moon, absolutely buzzing. It just shows that for me to catch fish, I've got to travel. I mean, it's taken us a couple of good couple of hours to get down here today with going to Brighton. It's just it's a pain. It is an absolute nightmare. But in the southeast of England, where I live, there's just no fish. Unless you want to catch fallback rays every day of your life. Um, and I don't. They get a bit boring after you've caught a few. They shouldn't even be around this time of year. It's not right. But it is what it is. Anyway, I'll bring you back if any of us get anything half decent. In a bit. Well, I've had to bring you back. Um, not for a fish, not for a rig, not for anything. Um, a few weeks ago, I've done a video digging ragworm, finding lots of free leads, something like that I called it. Um, and we was out, we was down on the Isle of Sheppey, like doing a bit of coastal foraging, finding a few free leads and looking at other shellfish and other bits and bobs. 
Um, but before that, we was digging some ragworm, me and my brother T. And I mentioned that uh, I nearly died years ago when I was a kid doing it. Now, since then, I said it is a long story because it's quite a long story. Um, but a few people commented on the video saying they want to know how, how it actually happened. And I kept saying, yeah, I'll say it in the next... Oh, you saw that bite. That's a whiting. That's a whiting. Um, I said I'll say it in the next video and I forgot. And the next video I forgot. But it's, I'm now not forgetting. So I was about, I you know, 15, 16. And obviously being that age, I knew everything because all 15 and 16 year olds do, as we all know. Um, I was digging some lugworm down the river. And... I was happily digging my lug like I did to go fishing and there's definitely a fish in there and the bloke walked past me with a bucket and I hadn't seen this bloke where I was digging I hadn't, I'd never seen him before so I thought oh he's new well being 15, 16 I was a nosy little sh twat and uh, <laughs> went up to him and said here mate what you got what you got in your bucket I knew he'd been digging so he had a fork and a big bucket well I, he had a bucket full of ragworm and I mean it was full of ragworm I was amazed and I was like oh mate where did you get them where did you get them and he said oh out there and round here and over there and down there and past the rocks and then down in the mud right down down, down in the river and I said uh, I said oh can I go out there he went no he said not really not not in your wellies because he had waders on well as I said being 15 16 I knew everything I went all right mate yep yeah, nice one I won't go out there I won't it sounds dangerous next day as soon as the tide was low enough I was straight out there well anyway this same fellow was out there um, I see where he was digging, I've gone straight out, walked out there in my wellies and before I knew it I was up to my nuts in mud, stuck, like properly stuck. I got one leg out, I couldn't get the other leg out, I was trying to get the other leg out and, and the other leg was going back in. After about 10 minutes of struggling, it, it, the, the fella that told me not to go out there come over and practically saved my life. He dug me out of the mud, he held me up till I got my breath back to like the sort of like <sighs> breathe and, and, and I calmed down because by then I was panicking. I mean we, I was a long way out. Down, down in the river um, a long way out uh, yeah and he basically he held me up till I was ready to go and he went right when I let you go you got to run and run over to them rocks and sit down until you've properly chilled out and then go back to where you dig your lug and never come back this far out again and well I'm now 29 nearly 30 and I've never been back um because now I know a lot more than when I was 15 or 16 so yeah that's 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 how I nearly died um if he weren't out there I would have done that day because back then I didn't have a phone well I did have but it wouldn't have had no credit I doubt I, I, doubt I even took it um, and like I say I was up to my danglies if not a bit further probably more up to my waist like my tra I lost my trousers I had to walk back in my boxes pretty much because I was that was wrecked absolutely wrecked the wellies were stuck gone um, I was very lucky that that man was out there um, and if only I'd have listened to him the day before you live and learn Three, two, one. All right guys um, it's dark again as you can see inevitably the water have started I've just dropped one off of this but this is that rig fish hunter rig the fish hunter rig um, so I'm going to unhook that you've already seen me put the other one away because I was using two pre-baiting ones so I didn't have to mess about so that one is going to go away with that one as you've already seen and then uh, this is now the same rig body same weight, same everything this is the big hooks with the big bait hopefully bigger fish again I, I don't actually know we're going to catch anything big but we're here you've got to try i don't know nothing about the beach the fish here and then I can't see because it's got no light but we're going to give it a bash anyway <laughs> right there's a big hook because it went in my finger big hook on the end that comes up right out to the clip so that's now clipped down it's formed your nice loop bring that down and there you go now again you can fish big long rigs like this so they're fish far away from the lead and like I said you can have that loop as big as you want it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how big that loop is you can have it 50 foot and you fish 50 foot away from your lead whatever but um, you can use an up and over big but I don't like them because they come unclipped um, and to have, to have four foot you need a two foot rig to have six foot you need a three foot rig because it obviously goes up and over but yeah it, it's, it's one of them but I'm gonna yeah, gonna cast this now as far as I can possibly cast it in the dark and I know. But right, yeah, well, I'll bring it back in a minute. Excuse me, guys. Right, I think we're done lads, well I'm done. Mike's still got a rod out, Dan's still got a rod out, Dan's packed most of his away, I've packed my big rod away because I couldn't touch the bait no more. I couldn't be messing about with that Mac Collins grid because it's just too cold. Um, my phone's saying it's minus two, it's, it's ridiculous, oh, I'm bitter, bitterly cold. Um, and we're just getting raided constantly by whiting, 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 even on the big hooks. So I don't do whiting, I've had enough. Um, I've just literally stripped the bait off my hooks and uh, yeah. 
I am over the moon with today's session. We've come a long our way really to get two fish and Mike's had one, but we came down here to catch a place and we caught we caught them. And nice ones and all. Not just like we're not just oh we got saved by a little place. They were they were two nice fish. Um what I had and, and Mike again, Mike had a lovely one too. Um thanks everyone for your patience over the last few videos because they've been pretty pants to be honest. There's been no fish, it's just been me blanking. So um, oh, hopefully you enjoy this one. Um, again, there's not been many fish, but yeah, it just shows if you get the weather right, you get the tides right, or I say the t I won't say the tides right because we got them wrong really. Um, if if the tides were if they were better tides um, and low water wasn't at half past two, we would have been here earlier um, and and fished instead of fishing it down, fished it up. But we needed a lot of, a, a, a low water about ten o'clock in the morning and fish it up, but. That's the way the tides were. We had the weather window. We've had Norvalese the last couple of days after big storm, Brendan, whatever it was last week. Um, and it's cleared the water out, which is what you need for place. You need clear water. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you won't catch place if the water's dirty, because there's an odd chance you might still get one. But general rule of thumb is you need clear water for the place. Um, and as soon as darkness falls, the place disappear and the whiting come out. So, daylight. Now it's darkness, it's about 8 o'clock, half 7, 8 o'clock, and, and I'm cold, and yeah, I've had enough of whiting. So, again, Thank you everyone, for especially for the all subscribers. I think, I mean, it's up 2,600 now-ish, something like that. Um, and the likes and, and the comments, it's, it's, it's all great. It is, it is fantastic and I'm absolutely, absolutely loving doing the videos and, and I'm loving the, 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 the good comments. I don't really get many bad ones. I think there's been a couple, but yeah, um, it's, it's great. So keep doing what you're doing, guys, and, um, and I'll do my best to keep catching you some fish. See you on the next one.